Hey, Stephen Mark from Kicks. You're rocking on BrickHouse.tv. Hey guys, Kathy Rankin with BrickHouse.tv coming to you from BLK Live. And it is nice and quiet. Nobody here right now. But I'll tell you what, it was not quiet this past weekend. Kicks was here in concert, hands down. One of the best live rock and roll acts I've ever seen, and I don't say that lightly. Now, I actually got to sit down with two of the guys, Steve Whiteman, the lead vocalist, and Mark Shanker on bass. Steve was explaining to me how Mark has just infused this band with new songwriting and new energy, and it showed the audience had a great time. And I had a lot of fun talking to these guys. They're like hanging out with two of your best friends, super down to earth, and really funny, and that is what this fans expect from this band. So take a look at what they had to say about their new music. I am sitting with the members, a couple of the members of Kix, one of my favorite bands, and this is Steve Whiteman, the lead singer, and we got Mark Shanker on bass. And guys, thank you for sitting down and talking with us Our a pleasure. little bit. You're going to be on stage in a few hours. Yeah. And um, I want to talk to you about you guys' tour. You're supporting, you had a CD and DVD release last year, mm -hmm. and... Um, a lot of fans, it's been really well received. I was looking at the reviews on Amazon. I'm a Kix fan, so huh. Kix fans love it because you are one of those bands that have stayed true to your music, I think. We try. <laughs> and yeah, I don't think you've veered off ever too much from your what makes you popular, but um, so it seems like there's a bit of a buzz and resurgence with this. Do you guys see it as a resurgence or is this just something that you're like, hey, we've always been here? No, it's absolutely, it's a resurgence. Um, when we first started, when we decided to do some shows, it was about probably 2008, something like that. And it was just kind of like local stuff, but we felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then an agent called me out of the blue that Brian recommended. He called me and, and talked me and tried to talk me into getting out on the road. And he said, give me a chance. I'll, I'll book you guys. And I'm like, I thought he was nuts. And, <laughs> and I just I just kind of laughed it off. And then he called me again the next day, and he wouldn't let me go. He's like, give me a chance. I, I promise you, I'll, I'll, I'll book you guys. And... I think his first gig was over for Oklahoma, and yeah, we got I in front it. of like twenty thousand people in the rain, and it, and we all just looked at each other, going, "Jesus Christ!" So people still care. Yeah, I, I didn't think they did. I didn't think anybody. Really? See, really, that surprises me. I would have thought. You know? I would. How can you know where yeah. we live? You know, we know the people around where we live care. Yeah, but right, right. When you go somewhere weird, and you know, and you look out there, and there's people there, it's like, huh. I, just didn't, I didn't think we had that much of an impact on the on the rock world in general, even though we, we had one good record, big record, and we got to taste arenas. But we never really mm -hmm. made that, you know, that big leap where everybody across the country knew us. So right. that's why I thought they were crazy. That's funny because from a fan perspective, I know so many people who are really huge fans of yours. And one of the things I see over and over when I researched other interviews the comment that people make is you guys were so underrated as a band. A lot, yeah, of, we get that lot of people <laughs> felt you were way better than Poison, me <laughs> included. Um, <laughs> Motley Crude. And, and so so have you been excited by by this reception that you're getting? Absolutely. Um, and and get, getting Mark into the band made a huge difference. Mark and I met each other with my little uh, local band called Funny Money. And I got Mark into Funny Money. And I eventually got Jimmy into Funny Money. So... When we decided to start doing these shows, we just had to plug Ronnie and Brian in. It was a really, really easy segue. And but Steve and I knew each other back in the 80s. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But my, we, my little crappy cover oh, bands true, used to true. warm up for kicks. <laughs> right. So right. they would go on stage and we would eat their deli tray. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And drink our Jack. And the Heineken. <laughs> You're finding out things about him now that you didn't know. He, he's, been, he's been a great addition to the band. Um, and and he, was, he was really the, the guy who really pushed to get the last record out to you. It was him and Brian, but Mark especially, was behind the, getting that record out. I, I didn't care. And that was Rock Your Face Off in, yeah, in 2014. Great everybody. album, by the way. These yeah. people are crazy. Yeah, again, I, I'm wrong, but I'm happy to be wrong. Because yeah. the, every, it was well received. It was a great record, and we're proud of it. So now that you're back out there, do you find touring to be fun again? Are you excited? Is it is it different now than it was back oh, when you were different. first peaking? It's way different. There's no more buses. There's no more vans it's not playing five days a week it's get on a plane fly the night before do a show do another show fly home that's much easier and where's home for you is it still east coast maryland yeah maryland yeah so when you are out on the road your fans kind of expect a, a over-the-top performance you guys are kind of known for your 
tongue in cheek approach yep. to your not only your lyrics and your songs, but the actual the shows, the yeah. whole performance. Do you ever feel like that overshadows who you are as musicians? Because you guys are really great musicians, and at the end of the day, it's about your craft too. Right. Did no, you ever feel? So. Is there a good balance there? Or I do think you... the two go hand in hand. I, when I first started to, to front the band, I was a drummer originally. So when they said, we need you to sing, and I had to go out front, I didn't know what the hell to do. So I thought, I, the only thing I know is I have a good sense of humor. So I started using my sense of humor. So that, that kind of grew with the band over the years, and that's what people come to expect. So they can come. We're not one of those fist-pumping cool bands, you know. I, I hate those guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, we, we amuse people. And, and we, we amuse and, ourselves, too. Right, right. right. I was going to say, yeah. to have, have you have to have sort of the similar senses of humor. Yeah. As a band to make it work, I would think. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we'll have, you know, what was it, last week where it blew up atomic bombs? <laughs> and Steve pointed, remember you pointed? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to see any craziness like that tonight? I couldn't remember how it went. I just totally got lost. And after the song, Steve was like, hey, Mark could play that last song. <laughs> and you just have to laugh. And that's what makes it fun yeah. is that you can just sort of, you know, look at each other and and laugh it off and, and right. go with it. Oh as my god, I made a mistake. Yeah, you know, as opposed it's, to getting shit after the yeah, show. Yeah, and it's just you know we're human and we make mistakes. Right. And, and we think it's funny. Yeah. And right. So that keeps us entertained on stage. You know, you hear somebody hit a Z chord and you look over at them and they're just staring at their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a lot better way to go it's, through life to be is. able to not yep, take yourself so There's seriously. No pressure and and you know we all know that we can play and everybody makes mistakes and it. We turn it into fun when, when, when we do, and something just doesn't go quite right. <laughs> so know. there's a lot of, I'm guessing that a lot of this is improvised, it's not planned out, but but at some point, especially you going from a drummer to a front man, that's a huge yeah, switch. That sucked. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, were you scared? Of Hell yeah. Did, did you go stuff. watch like other front yeah, men in yeah. bands to figure out what you want to do? And then how much did you pre-plan? Um, I think the turning point is when I saw Mick Jagger in 81. Yeah. When I saw this maniac out there, just perpetual motion, I'm like, that's how you do it. Yeah. Steel wheel? No, it was uh, Start Me Up. Start Me Up. What was Tattoo You? Tattoo You, right, right. But when I saw him, I was like, Absolutely. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, he's still doing it, which is amazing. It. Yeah, he's still doing it at that same level. Yeah, so, so that's my goal too. Well, good. So he's still having kids, I think. Ah. <laughs> yes, randomly all over the place, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, where do you see yourselves going? Um, you're enjoying this moment, and you're going to be on tour supporting this. Are you working on new music? What do you see happening in the next three to five years for the band? Yeah, we're always working on new music. Um, I think this year we're going to. Mark's got he had a great idea. This is going to be the 30th anniversary of Blow My Fuse. So we thought, what a great way to just promote Love this it. record, put it back out there with special things along with box it. Box set. Box set. And then Love the do box the whole set. record from beginning to end on, you know, live. And so I think we're going to dedicate this year to that record and think about a new record next year. That'd be fantastic. We never, we, they, have, before I got in the band, have never, we've never celebrated an anniversary of any of the records. Yeah. And since that was the one that sort of push kicks into... Mm -hmm. You know, more of a, of a public eye, so to speak. Mainstream. And, and this is three zero. Um, I thought it would be a good idea for you know these guys to celebrate that milestone for something that they put their heart and soul into, and sort of get um, you know just pause a moment and go, wow, wasn't this such a great thing that we did that pushed our band further than you know you ever thought you could get just playing shitty bars and clubs and stuff. And, right. And so I, I saw it was a good idea to, to, to allow these guys to relish in that in that moment and look back on that success and and sort of enjoy it a little more from you know the lens of perspective rather than oh my god we got to go play so it's a little different different thing for, for us for we've never celebrated like I said we've never celebrated any anniversary of a record and so I think it'll be fun and we could do some interesting things with it and we can milk the shit out of it. Yes, you can. <laughs> I was beating around the horse a little bit. You uh, may be politically I correct, just, we're but he's just going to milk the shit out of it. You know what? This is a, you ever seen anybody milk a cow? <laughs> this is blowing my fuse. This is a cow. <laughs> speaking, okay, speaking of politically correct, I did want to ask you one more question. We're in such a weird day and age where people are so easily offended. Everybody's politically right, correct. Welcome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, that was. You know what? I don't even All have right. to. I don't even have to ask the question. I think that answers it. Don't care. You yeah, guys are gonna care. just be yourselves. Exactly. Well, that's what the fans love. You guys, it's been great having you talk to us. Can't wait to see the show tonight. Our I know pleasure. there's a lot of people coming out, so 
We'll be here. It was sold out. I heard it was sold out. It was sold out. So now you guys can see why this was one of my favorite interviews I've ever done. I'll tell you what, it was so much fun to talk to these guys. And the exact personalities you saw in the interview, same personalities you saw on stage. And that is why the fans love this band. Anyways, you guys, catch us at the next show, and we'll see you then.